Number 259. Allah's Apostle sent us on a mission as an army unit and said, If you find so-and-so and so-and-so, burn both of them with fire. When we intended to depart, Allah's Apostle said, I have ordered you to burn so-and-so and so-and-so, but only Allah punishes with fire, so if you find them, kill them. The Muhammad-Allah combo continued to do a great Satan impersonation. Number 617. Allah's Apostle said, I would order someone to collect firewood and another to lead the prayer. Then I would go from behind and burn the houses of men who did not present themselves at the compulsory congregational prayer. Muhammad is Allah. He loved fire as much as the God he created. In Bukhari, Volume 4, Book 52, Number 260. Ali burnt some people to death, and this news reached Abbas, who said, had I been in his place, I would not have burnt them, as the prophet said. Don't punish anybody with Allah's punishment. No doubt I would have killed them, for the prophet said, If a Muslim discards his religion, kill him. Could somebody please explain how this can be tolerant or peace-loving? Number 196. Allah's apostle said, I have been ordered to fight with the people till they say, None has the right to be worshipped but Allah. Left unchecked, Muslims will continue to kill until all non-Muslims either surrender or die. Democracy and freedom are in conflict with fundamental Islam. Number 203. I heard Allah's apostle saying, We are the last, but will be the foremost to enter paradise. The prophet added, He who obeys me obeys Allah, and he who disobeys me disobeys Allah. He who obeys the chief obeys me, and he who disobeys the chief disobeys me. The imam is like a shelter, for whose safety the Muslims should fight. Whether this hadith confirms that Muhammad was Allah, or that apart from Muhammad there were no orders from Allah, is immaterial. His agenda was served, and to establish his legacy and to damn the world, he ordered Muslims to be obedient to Islamic clerics and kings forever. The only way to free Muslims from tyranny and non-Muslims from jihad is to abolish Islam. According to Muhammad, Islam and jihad were inseparable. Number 208. My brother and I came to the Prophet and asked to migrate. He said, Migration has passed away. I replied, For what will you accept our Pledge of Allegiance? He said, I will take the pledge for Islam and Jihad. That was Bukhari, Volume 4, Book 52, Number 208. Now I've shared this hadith before. It was one of Muhammad's favorites. There are a dozen different variations of it. This one is from Volume 4, Book 52, Number 220. Allah's Apostle said, I have been sent with the shortest expressions bearing the widest meanings, and I have been made victorious with terror. While I was sleeping, the keys of the treasures of the world were brought to me and put in my hand. Allah's apostle has left the world, and now we are bringing out those treasures. His motivation was booty, his means with terror. As an interesting aside, after I published Prophet of Doom, and then engaged in over 1,500 radio interviews across the nation to expose and to condemn Muhammad and his religion of Islam. The only online site to present the Bukhari Hadith, the one called MSA at the University of Southern California, went back in and edited what they had previously translated, changing this particular Hadith so that it removed the word terror. Number 233. Allah's Apostle forbade people to travel to a hostile country carrying copies of the Quran. This proves that every Islamic conquest was about power, control, and money, not religion. Muhammad didn't care for the Persians. It's amazing that Iranians and Iraqis follow a prophet who wanted them destroyed. Number 190. Allah's Apostle sent a letter to Khosrau. 
When he read the letter, he tore it. The prophet then invoked Allah to disperse them with full dispersion, to destroy them severely. Showing that he could hate everybody, the religious leader who cursed the Arabs, murdered Jews, and condemned Persians, went after the Byzantine Christians. Number 267. The prophet said, Kosra will be ruined. There won't be a Persian king after him. Caesar will be ruined. There will be no Caesar after him. You will spend their treasures in Allah's cause. He proclaimed, War is deceit. As a religion, Islam is bankrupt because the currency of faith is truth. However, as a war manifesto and terrorist dogma, Islam is perfect. It even comes complete with handy hints. Use what you steal to equip your militants so that they can steal more. And lie in wait. It makes conquering and plundering easier. Number 268. Allah's Apostle said, War is deceit. When you combine this with Quran 8.7, Wipe the infidels out to the last. And Quran 8.39, So fight them till all opposition ends and the only religion is Islam. You get an ongoing state of war that encourages Muslims to continually deceive and murder infidels. This is why they use our media to proclaim jihad is a spiritual struggle and Islam is peaceful. Muslims lie to us while their comrades kill us because their prophet and God ordered them to do these very things. These next hadith demonstrate this principle. Number 270-271 The prophet said, Who is ready to kill Kab bin al-Ashraf, the Jew who has really hurt Allah and his apostle? Since the Quran says man cannot hurt Allah in any way, Allah is either a liar or he is a man, perhaps both. Maslama said, O oh Allah's apostle, do you want me to kill him? He replied in the affirmative. Maslama said, Then allow me to deceive him. The prophet said, I allow you. Muslim militants are deploying this same strategy to deceive and kill today. This is how Islam has survived. It is from Bukhari, Volume 4, Book 53, Number 386. Umar sent Muslims to great countries to fight pagans. He said, I intend to invade Persia and Rome. So he ordered us to go to the Persian king, Khosra. When we reached the enemy, Khosra's representative came out with 40,000 warriors saying, Talk to me, who are you? Mugira replied, We are Arabs. We led a hard, miserable, disastrous life. We used to worship trees and stones. While we were in this state, our prophet, the messenger of our Lord, ordered us to fight you till you worship Allah alone or pay us the jizya tribute tax and submission. Our prophet has informed us that our Lord says, Whoever amongst us is killed as a martyr shall go to paradise to lead such a luxurious life as he has never seen, and whoever survives shall become your master. Jihad is Islam's nastiest business. Mm-hmm. 